in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There is one thing needful, Father. Said so there is one thing needful, Father. Father, it's the prayer of Jesus, remember? All year we've been on this prayer. Father, you won't pray it enough. Well, we can't. And our sinful nature constantly leads us away from the prayer. But Jesus brings us back to it again and again. The one thing needful. Father, we see this in the lives of two servants, Martha and Mary. And it's easy for people in today's gospel to try to compare themselves to one or the other. Are you a Martha or are you a Mary? A busy doer of good things, working and slaving around all the time. Or the one who just sits around and greets people with a smiley face. And there are many Marthas in the world who want Martha defended. Hey, she works hard for her money. So hard for her money. She works hard for her money. Okay, well, you know the rest of that. And in doing so, may miss the point. At the same time, there are a bunch of Marys in the world, too, who like just to sit around and listen while a lot of work has to get done. I believe Jesus is showing us something about his prayer in both of these servants. There remains one thing needful. Father, in today's gospel, as Jesus enters the village, one of the sisters welcomes Jesus into her home. I'll give you a hint. It's not Mary. Martha. Martha welcomes him in. Martha knows there's one thing needful, Father. And wonderfully, following the example of Father Abraham in today's first reading, who upon looking up in the tent saw three guests outside, recognized in this powerful plurality that the Lord himself was there visiting his people. And when the Lord Jesus is knocking on your door, my friends, there is one thing needful, Father. You may not have vacuumed, you may not have swiffered, you may not have dusted, you may not have cleaned, but my friends, when Jesus is at your door, you better open. For he has good things in store for you, just as he did for Martha. He came into her home, where she herself had been working, like he came into the home of Abraham, who himself recognized that it was time to get one of those from the herd of cattle, time to get some curds and milk, and time to ask Sarah to bake some bread cakes and feed these guests who had arrived. For in doing so, we welcome Jesus just as Jesus welcomes us. It's not that Jesus is welcomed into the house of Martha as much as it is that Martha had been welcomed into the house of the Lord. Through the waters of holy baptism, God brings us into the house so that no matter how busy we are, no matter how many things there are in our to-do lists, Jesus has time for us and space for us and meets us there in the busyness of our everyday lives and allows us with Jesus to pray the one thing needful. Father, for those hands of Jesus were open just as the Father's hands were open, bringing Martha into his life and into his experience so that just as Jesus would go to the cross and suffer and die for the sins of the world and rise from the dead that we might have life and healing in his name, that Jesus is delighted when we can welcome him into our home. You are Martha's today. With the many things on your own to-do lists, dare I look at your Google calendars? Dare we put up on a screen somewhere all of your emails? Oh, we have plenty of things to do. 
And in those plenty of things to do, by God's mercy, by the power of his spirit, working in the word and sacraments, you have welcomed him. Hallelujah. Because he first welcomed you. As Jesus came in the house, the other sister, Mary, sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his teaching. Very much like Sarah, don't you think? Who stood outside of the tent and listened to the discussion. A discussion that said Sarah, next year this time, was going to have a son. Sarah knew that she was not only one who had uh, been advanced in years, but she was one who had experienced uh, men on pause. And because of it, she felt it would be impossible for her to give birth. She laughs. But that laughter, that Yitzhak, becomes the name of the very child she bears. You know, sitting at the feet of Jesus can often lead to provocative surprises as God reveals his mercy and love to us, surprising us with joy where we never thought about it or expected it, and surprising us with awesome deeds of righteousness, if only we would sit at his feet and listen. For there is one thing needful, Father. Father, <coughs> hence our opening hymn today, speak O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. I know it's one of your favorites, Redeemer. We love that song. It's so rich, reminding us that God brings us such depth. But he brings us to his feet to listen to him. That depth can surprise you. As God says, next year this time, you're not going to have that ailment anymore. And next year this time, you're going to have an even better job. And next year this time, you're going to be reconciled with those family members. And right now you may laugh, but my friends, when Jesus says it, it shall be so. And as it is so, Mary... Praise with Jesus, Father. Listening to Jesus. As Sarah prays, Father. And Abraham prays, Father. And Martha says, wait a minute. I'm busy here trying to curry this goat. I'm trying to put 500 cocktail beef patties on a platter to share. I'm trying to get things ready for this banquet and I'm slaving around in the kitchen from place to place and part to part. And Mary's sitting around. Jesus, tell her, get up and help me. But that's not what Jesus does. He says, there's one thing needful, Father. The one thing is Jesus sitting at his feet, hearkening to his word. Not being distracted by even the good things that occupy our time and our lives. There can be many good activities, wholesome activities, edifying activities, efficacious things. My friends, nothing compares to Jesus. David the psalmist hit on the head today. You heard it. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the fair beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. My friends, we look around in so many different directions for that happiness, thinking that if we can knock off the items of our to-do list, that we'll be happier. Let me tell you on behalf of all of those who actually get things done in the world, you can knock off a bunch of things on the to-do list. 
and a whole bunch more are going to get added to that list. Happiness and joy and peace don't come from what you've accomplished. Happiness, joy, and peace come from what Jesus has accomplished. He went to the cross. He suffered and died. He rose from the dead. He ascended in glory. And he's coming back at the end of time so that by the power and mercy of his spirit, we might see him and three strangers that come to our tent door. We might see him in a traveling pilgrim who comes into our village. We might notice him among the poor and the needy and the outcast, the rejected and dejected and despised. We might see him in the eyes of children and hear him in the shrieks of older adults. There we might see God coming to us in our lives. And like Martha and Abraham, God help us let him in. And like Sarah and Mary, God help us sit and listen to what he says. Commending things to our Father is not relinquishing a sense of responsibility. It is simply knowing that by God's mercy and grace in the waters of baptism, God brings us to his holy altar to receive the body and blood of Jesus for forgiveness and life and salvation. And when that happens, my friends, then the truly important things in life become clear for everyone. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the solutions. I don't have the details of how your life works out. But I know one who does, hallelujah. And more importantly, he knows me, hallelujah. And even more importantly, he knows us, hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. The crucified, risen, ascended, and returning one is the one who brings you into his fold today so that you may pray, Lord, thee I love with all my heart. I pray thee ne'er from me depart with tender mercy. Cheer me. For your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. And as it is, my friends, we gladly welcome Jesus, as he has welcomed us first. And we take our place at his feet today. Under the oaks of Bamre. And there under the cross, we dine with him as he dines with us. And we join the prayer of the one who teaches us all along that there is one Thing needful. One thing needful. Father. In the name of Jesus.